her I'm yeah. here hearing her speak. Mm -hmm. Are you are you familiar with who she is? No. Me neither. <laughs> I guess you must be good though to yeah. her to come and he wants to speak. Yeah, I guess it's quite a big deal that she's coming. Yes. She's apparently really busy, but was interested in what we were doing. Yeah, well, so. usually busy people get things done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it working, Ann? Yeah, uh, yes, we're good to go. Pretty sure, yeah. Um, well, our group is getting a living. All right. We me. usually have Ashley Moore with us, but she had to be out of town tonight. All right. But, um, and so we just want to talk to you about how you make a living. All right. Well. And how you made a living. You want me to start from now or back when I first started? Uh, back when you first started. All right. Basically, any, any your whole age? life story. <laughs> oh, my life story? All right. Well. The hard stuff, the good stuff, anything you want to tell us. Well, my life story begins in Money, Mississippi, uh, October the 24th. First, 1942, I was born, and that's down, uh, they call the Delta. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was about four years old, we migrated to Muncie. There was a migration of uh, Afro-Americans to the north mm -hmm. because most of them were sharecroppers. I mean, they worked farming, picking cotton, mm -hmm. and it was pretty rough for some, but <clears throat> according to my mother, it wasn't that bad. That, uh, Mr. Chatham was real nice, you know. The, the man they worked for. Mm -hmm. But uh, I started school at Garfield Elementary and uh, I went to the sixth grade and then upon graduation from Garfield, I went to Wilson for two years, Wilson Middle School. Then I went to McKinley. McKinley's, it's, it's been phased out. Mm -hmm. It was right between the field house and the new central. Okay. It was a middle school there. 7th, 8th, and ninth. <clears throat> then I went to Muncie Central in uh, 1958 to 61. During this time, I was working. I worked, uh, I cut grass for uh, a doctor and his wife out on 67. I did some, uh, well, going back, I used to shine shoes in a barbershop, uh, Van Dusen's barbershop, and cut grass. And then I began, I worked at Ball Hospital. I went, I graduated from Central, I went to Ball State for a year on elementary education curriculum. And after that year, I got into working. Mm -hmm. I worked at Ball Hospital in the kitchen, dietary department. Then I got married. Well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let me say this, I, I made 80, about $82 every two weeks. I had to take all the food, trucks up to the different floors, bring them down, clean them up, take them again. Mm -hmm. But at that time there was only uh, seven floors mm -hmm. and they had first and second med building. That area is now the psych ward. And so <clears throat> I kept pretty busy and I'll let you look over. This is some information that uh, ministered our church. He got something together so I thought, well, I'll get me something together. I, I, learned, <laughs> I learned from him. But uh, I worked at Ball Hospital, and I mean, I kept busy, and I heard they were hiring in the factory at Warner Gear. And so I left, and I began to work in Warner Gear, Bog Warner, and I was making three fifty an hour. Now, that was good money back then, back in 62. 62. But the unfortunate thing was they had a lot of layoffs. I, I got married in 1963, December the uh, December the 15th of 63. Well, I worked there for a year and four months. I got laid off three times, and I just didn't see any security. So consequently, I left and I went to uh, Marsh in York Yorktown. There's a warehouse, and, and we made up the cottage cheese and Marsh and produce. Mm -hmm. And I didn't work there too long, but uh, one of the managers, uh, the Marsh Brothers, talked to me about getting in a store. He said I could become a manager, I'd go to school, but I didn't uh, pursue it. I left Westing, I mean, I left um, 
Marsh, and I went to Westinghouse. Later became ABB. It's a big factory right off of uh, Cowan Road. Mm -hmm. If you come in on Muncie on 67 from Anderson, you'll see it to the west. Um, I worked there for about eight months. Then I went to Delco, Remy, and Anderson. That was General Motors. Mm -hmm. And I found, me, I found a home. I found myself a home. I worked there for 33 years. And I had a chance to retire, but I wasn't ready. So I transferred to Delphi Chassis in Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for four years. That gave me a total of 37 years, and I retired January of 2002. So at the present time, I'm retired but I also minister at a church. And so I was doing this, in other words, I had two jobs. I was really working, uh, you call part-time pastor, mm -hmm. as well as working in the factory. And of course I went to school going back. There's some I left out, so I, I'm telling you the, the uh, vocational part. But I went to Bible college in 1968, uh, Crossroads Bible College in Farmland, Indiana. Now, that's about 14 miles east of Muncie on 32, in Randolph County. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with uh, that area? I'm not. I'm not. I'm, we're, I'm, we're both from Ohio. All right, Ohio? Yep. Well, I worked in Dayton for I'm about four Cincinnati. years. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. I had some friends. They lived, one of them lived in Forest Park, okay. a little out of Cincinnati, and one built a new home. Uh, somewhere out in that area. They used to work up in uh, Hamilton and there's a place up near Cleveland. Uh, Hamilton and I can't think of the name of it, but it's up northern, uh, uh, you know, and they would stay and then drive home on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Well, they were real good friends of mine. And during the time I was in Ohio, I stayed in Middletown because, uh, you know, I got sort of, it was a little rough going back and forth on the road. <clears throat> but I just just let you see God was with me because in about a year and a half, I traveled over the highway. It was 93 miles from where I lived to, to the parking lot, one way. And I did that about a year and a half. See, I had to go all the way from through Muncie, that's about six miles, to 35, I'd go to Richmond, then I'd get on 70, and shoot down, you know, going west, and then I take 75 south, and Edwin C. Moses, and then I go. Yeah, I've taken many times. Yeah, I would go down uh, uh, Wisconsin Boulevard. That's where the plant was. They had two plants, one on Needmore and one Wisconsin Boulevard. Why? But, why did you stay there for a year and a half, having to drive? Why did I go back and forth? Mm -hmm. Well, it was more money, actually. Mm -hmm. See, in Anderson, what? They used to have a, a workforce, about 18,000 employees. And what happened over the years, they began to downsize and they would close the plant down and tear it down. I'll give an example. There was plant two, four, six, eight. There was plant seven, plant three, plant 10, plant 15, plant 17, 18, and plant 20. And the main, uh, I guess the the uh, headquarters, or you know where they had the uh, where you get hired, uh, the employment office, first aid that was in plant one, mm -hmm. the accounting department, plant managers, engineers, all that. But they vacated that building, and it was just, you know, it was a nice building. Nobody was there. They they end up tearing it down. So what I did, I needed more money actually. I wasn't ready to retire. I could have retired with 30 years. See, I had 33 years, mm -hmm. but I was a little too young, really. Um, and I was working, they paid us for 40 hours. Now, that was good money, but I was used to working overtime. Mm -hmm. And that's how we really made our money, working Saturdays and maybe 10-hour days, 12 hours a day. Well, and so by being a member of the United Auto Workers and Delphi, I had a chance to transfer, and so I transferred to Ohio, and I, at the time I was working in the tool and die trade. Mm -hmm. So they told me there was an opening in Columbus, Ohio, Dayton, and another city, so I chose Dayton. 
And when I went there, we were working seven days a week, 10 hours a day. That's 70 hours as compared to 40 hours. Mm -hmm. And I didn't work the Sundays, but I did work, uh, say, six, 60 hours. So the money, the benefits, and everything. So it was worth to me to sacrifice and go, and that's why I really went. But uh, going back to <clears throat> Crossroads, in 1968, I went to Crossroads Bible College, and I transferred my hours from Ball State, and I took classes, and I did some student teaching, and in 1971, I got a BA in Bible, and uh, the next year, I did some research work, I did my teaching and continued my education, and I got a Bachelor of Theology, 1972. And then I got a Master's in Theology, I think it was 74. And I continued teaching at Crossroads. And then I think it was 1975, I got a PhD in Religion. It's on that paper, I may have the wrong date. But, uh, let's see. There it is. That would have been 75, yes. Uh, Dr. Shockney, he was the president. And, and in 1985, I did some distant uh, work, what correspondence, what we called in. He'd sent assignment. Dr. Bachman would, and I'd have to summarize the chapters of the book and get it typed up and mailed in. And I got a doctorate of ministry. The school originally was in Wichita, Kansas, but then it moved to Long Beach. And, uh, and so all this time I was working, going to school, working, and my wife, bless her heart, you know, she was with the children. And we raised eight children five boys and three three daughters and offer of one income too. Wow. So it let you see how working very hard. Mm-hmm. I worked I worked a lot of overtime and then we got real good money um, in that trade. But uh, let me see now. Then I got with a uh, Dr. Acock out of Columbus, Ohio. He's an ex-Catholic priest, and he went to Catholic University. He was in World War, not World War, but the Korean War, and he got burned with napalm. Wow. And he started a school in Columbus, Ohio. They have a branch in Toledo and, uh, let's see, Columbus, Toledo, and I think there's one more city. I can't think of the name of it. Toledo, Columbus. But anyhow, I got with him and I did some work and I got a, a degree which was equivalent to a doctor of theology. This is what this is about. Oh. See, that's Dr. Isaiah Acock. And, uh, and he, he made me the academic dean of, uh, there's my name right there, this, this school. During graduation, I'll go and sign a certificate as a superintendent or as a dean. And... But I'm not able to go like I want to, because I, I tell you one experience I had. I went, I was on my way to go to Columbus from Dayton, and I made the wrong turn. And I got in a lot of traffic downtown, and I couldn't, and so I decided I'm going back to Dayton, or Middletown. See, I was staying in Ohio at the time. And what I'd do, I would come home on uh, Wednesdays to teach Bible study and Sundays. But I would come home. Wednesdays, I'd go back to Ohio that next day, and I'd come home on Fridays, take care of business. I'd go back to work Saturday, come back home for Sunday for church, and start all over on Mondays. Wow. And so, you know, the Lord had to be with me. I tell you, I got sleepy on the road sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I would just like say, I'm driving, and all of a sudden I'd wake up, I'd doze off, and I'd, I'd be heading towards a car or off the road. And I know Ernie and Alvin, they were the ones that lived around Cincinnati. They said they knew a man that up in uh, Ohio, 
And there were two of them. One of them said, he's going to get some rest. And this other man said, well, I'm going to just get on the road. And he had a wreck and got killed. Um, it's just like, uh, you know, and I could ex relate to, you know, being on the road. Mm -hmm. I think I see Dan coming, the photographer. Oh, yes, yep. Danny, he was going to stop by. Yeah. I'm glad he didn't get lost. He was a little concerned. Hey, Dan, how are you? All right, my friend. Excellent, excellent. Make yourself at home now. Thank you very much. And come on in and sit a spell. Thank you. You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Don't I interrupt? Go Did ahead. you get lost or anything? No. He was just telling us his life story. Oh, okay. And now, where so, were we? This business story. Pardon? I told Danny we're getting your own business all right. story. Would you mind if I took some pictures? Is that okay? Not at all. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's however you, um, you, you know, if you want me to pose a certain no, way, no, no, be no, no, in the no, no. I don't mean to interrupt at all. Just don't come to right. <laughs> Now I hope I don't break the camera. Anything. Absolutely. No. Well, now I understand with that driving. Yes. What you were just talking about. I drive a lot. Um, my dad drives a lot too for his business. And yes. Just all drive back and forth to Cincinnati a couple times and mm -hmm. just get really tired. And there's times oh, where it's like someone's with me because I made it and I was tired right. on the road. Well, one experience I had, I was going into work and I was like sleepy going to work. Now, that's bad. But we would work maybe 10, 12 hours a day. And uh, it was rough. But the Lord saw me through it, and I'm glad it's over, though, I tell you. But, uh, let me think now. There's a thought I had. I was trying to think of that city where they, they worked up near, it's, it's somewhere up near uh, Cleveland. But anyhow, hopefully it'll come to me. But, uh, what I did, I taught at the Bible College and uh, did ministering at the church. In fact, we started a church in 1983, almost 20 years. And uh, we, of course, had help. And then, I mean, this is... You started a church? Mm -hmm. Where was it? It's uh, on the east side of Muncie on Willard Street. Berea Apostolic Church. It's a Pentecostal church. It's near Macedonia. It's an area they call industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, and actually, we used to live not too far from there. I was raised up on 2nd Street between Hackley and Pershing Drive. Now, Willard is like a 4th Street. In Muncie, there's a 1st, 2nd, and 3rd is a very short street. And then there's Willard, 5th, 6th, and it just goes on up. Now, 12th Memorial Drive is 12th Street. Mm -hmm. They said that during the war, they changed the name, and they, they called it Memorial because of the, yes, the soldiers you know, got killed. Mm -hmm. But uh, And then they go on up to 20-something Street near Southside. But, now, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of losing my place here because I'm getting off some, so you may have to get me back. Oh, that's all right. Uh, but... Uh, let me see where. So right now I'm retired, and I'm, I mean I'm still with the church, you know, ministering, but I'm not working on the outside like I used to. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Are there any specifics that that you can think of? Um. Well, what what made you want to become a minister? Oh well. I'll tell you what, it was an experience I had. I used to lead the devotion where I would lead the song service mm -hmm. and the praises. Mm -hmm. And I was just doing that, and, and I started preaching. The Lord anointed me. This was when I was in high school, either 1960 or 61. It happened twice. And I mean, the scriptures just began to flow out of me, and I began to preach. And I wasn't a preacher. So... What I, as I use in retrospect, I look back over that and I said, the Lord, I believe he was showing me that he had a part for me in ministry. Mm -hmm. And I got my local license in 1968. That's about the same time I started going to Bible college. And I got ordained. I, I, I got my, then I got my regular credentials. 
Then I got ordained in 71 in Gary, Indiana. Bishop Stewart from Danville, Illinois, he ordained me. And about, let's see, 83, and I mean, the church I got saved in, I stayed there until I left to start a work, you know, on our own. Mm -hmm. And so that, though, there's really been only two churches uh, since I, I got saved. But my roots go back to Baptist. Have you ever heard of Mount Zion Baptist mm -hmm. on Penn Street? That's where I got my start. Mm -hmm. Reverend Love was the pastor. And my, our parents took us to church. And I, I don't know, I was probably in elementary school. And so we've been raised, you know, to go to church all our lives. Mm -hmm. And so, but as far as ministry, I think my experience was I began to study the word and to pray, to memorize scriptures. And I, at this time I was single, I wasn't married. And I believe God saw something within me. Uh, I don't know. But anyhow, he began to deal with me. It wasn't the thing that I decided, I want to be a minister. I want to. It, but he dealt with me first. Mm -hmm. See, I used to be a deacon. And uh, I was a Sunday school superintendent. I was a deacon. And then the ministry came. It was like step by step. Superintendent, deacon. Then I got my local license. Then I got my regular license. Then I got ordained. And now I'm a district elder. And in our group, that's the next thing to a bishop. Huh. But in the Bible, the bishop and the elders are used interchangeably, those titles. Bishop comes from a root word meaning uh, Episcopal. The Episcopal church is ruled by bishops, mm -hmm. whereas the Presbyterian church is ruled by elders. Now, um, but a lot of times we'll call on a minister or pastor. Well, he is the bishop of that church, but he doesn't have the title as a bishop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, they call us reverends sometimes, elders, pastor, and whatever, doctor, or whatever, you know. It's just, uh, it's exciting, you know. Mm -hmm. So all those words are actually used interchangeably, like reverend and pastor? Yes, well... <clears throat> Reverend could be a minister who's not a pastor, though. Hmm. So you could have a pastor or a senior pastor, but he has other ministers under him. Hmm. And they're like, uh, they, they're reverends or ministers too, or they're a pastor over the youth, pastor over the education department. But the senior pastor is would be the, uh, the head, the head man, mm -hmm. in other words, over the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'll say this, but... Also, often they'll call us both reverends, you know, mm -hmm. reverend so and so, uh, or pastor so and so, or elder so and so, you know. <laughs> and so it's almost like, just like we're all ministers, and you're the pastor. All right? They call us minister so and so. You're a minister. She's a minister. I'm a minister. They call us reverend, mm -hmm. but we're not the pastors. He's the one who get the pastor title. Mm -hmm. Dan, that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dan the man. <laughs> but, uh, I uh, wish I had a map and I could, that city in Ohio, I'm trying to think. <laughs> but anyhow, that's my experience as far as ministry. And of course, my wife, she was saved before I was. And uh, she's been with me all these years, you know. <laughs> my help me. <laughs> Somebody said, the wife of the minister is the neck that turns the head. I don't know if you ever heard that. You heard it? <laughs> but, uh, you know, she, she's done good work raising all those children. There's a picture of, uh, we were somewhat younger back there. <laughs> that picture in the center of the top of the fireplace. In fact, the baby is 24. Michael's about 24 years old. <laughs> he was here today. He is my grandson. Oh. I'll, sh I'll show you which one I mean. The one in the life here. He's 27 years old. Wow. And I'll tell you what. This is our baby daughter over here. She lives with us, but she's not here. She, she's working. And... Uh, 
We got a son in Hawaii, one in uh, Germany too. Uh, Brian, he lives in Germany. What's he doing in Germany? He was in the military, but he he just he got out of service. He's just living over there now. He speaks the language. And Tony, he was in uh, he was stationed at Schofield Barracks, at, you know, in Hawaii, Honolulu. Mm -hmm. and he came back to Fort Knox for a while, and he ended up going back to Hawaii, and he lives there also. But um, in fact, we got some pictures. His aunt took some pictures and shared with uh, his mother, mm -hmm. and she had some made off of them. But uh, I, I've done a lot, but uh, I don't know whether did it did whether it amounted to a whole lot, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so. I mean, in yeah. some was it very difficult? I'm sure it was to have a job or go to school for ministries and then have children at home. It kept me busy. The thing <laughs> I look over, I don't, I don't. I wish I had spent more time with the children. You mm -hmm. know, that was the only thing. But I had to work. And make a living. Yeah. You know, and when I had a, when I had a chance to work overtime, I did um, because it was more money, and that helped us to make it. You know, they they needed supplies in school, clothes, and all this, and it, it worked out good. Okay. And I believe they understood the situation. But uh, but that's basically now my work situation, schooling. And ministry. Um, I haven't said much about the family, but uh, you know, they're all of them live in Muncie, with the exception of uh, one daughter. She's down in Indianapolis. The oldest daughter, she lives in Indianapolis. But David's in Muncie. Mark, Michael, and our middle girl, Darnetta, and the baby girl, Annetta. How many kids do you have? Eight. Eight. That's a lot of kids. But you know, it didn't, back then, the medical cost, it wasn't mm -hmm. as high mm -hmm. uh, as it is now to say for your wife to go and have a baby. It, it, it wasn't expensive. And, uh, you know, it worked out all right. <laughs> Was but, it ever difficult to get your jobs at the factories? No, no. It wasn't bad at all at that time because I could go from one job to the next. Jobs were plentiful, but now it's a different situation. What has happened is big business have gone global. Mm -hmm. They're going to China, Mexico, um, South America, and they're, they're able to get the work done cheaper. Um, but I don't know, I don't know about the quality though. Right. But, but I look at the future generations here in America, I think it's hurting our people. Uh, but they have to do what they have to do. Now, see, I say we got in when it was a good time. We got in, we retired, but now it's almost like they're concerned about their shareholders, making profit, uh, the employees just another number, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they tell me now in Anderson there's only about 3,000, maybe 800 workers out of 18, maybe 19 to 20,000 employees. See, when we would go to work, we would go up Mounds Road and we couldn't get to the light. It was so much traffic. We'd have to stop way back and wait, you know, get to the light. And there's a big, there was a big intersection, right, at 109 and Mounds Road. And we could look north, and we'd see just bumper to bumper traffic. It's sort of like a, people coming from Alexander and Elwood, mm -hmm. north of Anderson. So there were people from Muncie, Anderson, Alexander, Elwood, Noblesville. Frankton, Frankfurt, and there was one man from Indianapolis, and maybe a few more. It was, I mean, they had a lot of people. And if you didn't get early, you might even have trouble getting a parking place. 
They had people working on the first ship, second, and the third ship. And I mean, things were thriving. See, what it was, Delco Remy made the electrical components for General Motors cars, mm -hmm. for GM cars. For example, they, they made the starters, Delta Tron or alternators, uh, windshield mm -hmm. That was the newer. See, when I was there, they changed the name from Delphi to, I mean, excuse me, Delco Remy to Delphi. There was another name between that, but it eventually became Delphi. And then they sold some of the plants and it became Delco Remy America. DR, we call it DRA. They had one president of the union, but they had uh, three bargaining chairmen. And they had their own, uh, you know, committee members and all this. But uh, <clears throat> what they did is they began to, I think what happened back in the 70s, they had a strike. And when they, they, they went on a strike in Anderson, they shut down General Motors almost because they couldn't get parts. Mm -hmm. But after that strike, I guess GM management decided this is not going to happen again. They began to build plants in Meridian, Mississippi, uh, Albany, Georgia, and the South, so that if that would happen, they could still keep going. Mm -hmm. And it just, then eventually they began to shut plants down and tear them down. I'll give you an example. Plant two, it closed. They tore it down. Plant four, it was torn down. Six and eight, then the foundry, that was plant five. They shut it down and tore the building down. And I worked in seven for years, seven and eight, um, 11, plant 15, plant 16, plant one. And I'll tell you what's standing now. Plant three is still standing. Plant seven is down. Plant 10 is gone. Plant 19 is still there. Uh, plant 18 is there. 17. But the main plants would be 11 and 20. 11 and 20. And 18 is where they have the offices now. So it's, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't look good for the anybody that want, wants to get the factory work. <laughs> so I'd encourage them to go to Ball State like you're doing and get into another field. <laughs> uh, what do you think are the best opportunities for people in Muncie right now to, to get a job? Opportunities? I would think uh, teaching. There's always a good an opening for good teachers. Um, we're losing a lot of teachers because I understand they have to get the class settled down before they can teach. Mm -hmm. You know, they're having problems with uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. um, teaching, mathematics, engineering, um, I would say Those are some of the fields. I'm sure there are more. Business is a good field. Uh, but, uh, and I'll tell you another thing. A person doesn't always have to go to college. There are electricians. Electricians is a good field to get into. Mm -hmm. There's a demand for electricians, and they make a lot of money, too. Uh, I'll say uh, doctors, <laughs> the medical field. <laughs> There's a lot of attorneys, but you know, I guess a person would survive, you know. Uh, dentist, dentistry, you can go on and on. But even ministry, you know, you know. Ministry is a good field, but I wouldn't advise a person to get into it just for a profession. I would say if they have the call, then it's all right. But not to just be doing it. It's a lot of work. <laughs> because you're dealing with people, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. And most of them are all right, but sometimes 
I heard a pastor. Have you heard of Pastor Willie Jackson? Uh -huh. Here's what he said. He did a funeral or homegoing service. And he said, this is Laura Benny. He said she was easy to pastor. She was faithful. And, but he said, some people are easy to pastor because they never come to church. <laughs> but see, that's no good. <laughs> In other words, what he said, you don't have any trouble out of them, but they're never there. <laughs> And he's a good speaker. But I really, I have material, but I really I haven't had a chance to look over as far as vocations, you know, mm -hmm. for a person to get into. Mm -hmm. um, as your factory worker, as your factory job, did you ever experience any racism or anything? That uh, I, yes, I, I, I experienced some. Uh, when I went to Ohio, there was probably some underlying in, in uh, Anderson, but it, I, I, don't, I can't remember anything because okay. we got along real, real mm -hmm. well. But in Ohio, when I went, I had a lot of time. See, I had about 30 years seniority, mm -hmm. and some of the people, it was, they were resentful because here, here I come and I go above them as far as seniority, and they were there before I was. Right. But yet, because of the contract, what was negotiated, this was allowed. And so what I did, even though I lost time as far as my seniority date, I was ahead of a lot of the people there. Mm -hmm. Now, and some, they wouldn't even speak. I, would, I, would, I, I don't know why I should call it racism, but it was a lot of indifference or cold. I mean, I went and I went to do a job, but some of the men, they wouldn't speak. And, uh, and they were maybe critical, negative. They had a thing like, well, if you didn't do your apprenticeship there in Ohio at Delphi Chassis, you weren't as good as the others. Mm -hmm. But the jobs they gave me to do, I was able to do. You know, It was some things I needed help with, uh, the die repair part. But So I, this is what I'd say I experienced. But the longer I worked there, I think they got used to me. And mm -hmm. they began to, you know, treat me all right. <laughs> but and then some have a personality; they're not friendly to start with. So I, I, I don't want to be unfair. But there was an experience that uh, one of the men they told me about. There was a black who worked on the third shift, and they said one of the uh, white men was playing a tape, which was uh, negative of blacks, mm -hmm. and he told the boss about it. The boss didn't do anything. And so what happened, he went and hit the man uh, who was playing it. And so I guess that nipped it in the bud. And this same man, he was critical of me, so I think he did have a problem with blacks. Mm -hmm. Whereas most everybody else, they were all right. Yeah. Uh, and this, this man, he told me, he said he had to beat up one. You know what he told me? He said he's going to have to retire before he kills somebody. <laughs> That's what he said. But but he he retired. He was he was on third shift. Real nice. Uh, but and the other man, he he was all right. I would say he had his way. He and I would speak to one another. And then he got where he stopped speaking. So I stopped speaking to him, whether it was right or not. And but he was he was real. You know, he had his own way, his own uh, personality, and I accepted that away. If he wanted to be that way, that was his business. I didn't go to make friends. I went to do a job. Mm -hmm. I knew what I had to do. Mm -hmm. But it was a learning experience for me. But that, that's basically all I encountered, you know. Uh, and I think most people who came from another division had a similar experience. There were some who were like tool and die makers mm -hmm. or tool makers because they didn't have tool and die on their journeyman car. They put them in the machine group, and they did all right. I mean, they they accepted it, uh, but I think they just wanted to do like they wanted to, you know, because they were there. The management, but things worked out real good for me. There were three of us about the same time. Uh, a man from Michigan, uh, Great Lakes, Paul. And a gentleman from uh, Ron, he came from 
Allison's um, in Indianapolis, and I came from Anderson. They were Caucasian, I was black. And so they had to call the International up in Detroit to let us in. They wanted to keep us out of our trade. But see, when you sign the papers, it said tool and die maker. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, they wanted to put us maybe in another trade like machinist, mm -hmm. cutter grinder. But we didn't go for that. We came to be tool and die makers. But I was just glad to get over there and work and, you know, make more money. <laughs> Did you take an active role at all in the union? Did what? Did you take an active role in the union at all? Not active. I attended, when I was in Anderson, some union classes um, through Indiana University. I took uh, sexual harassment and collective bargaining. Uh, I was really, I wanted to get an associate's degree from IU, you know. Mm -hmm. What they would do is after we worked, a professor would come to the union hall uh, from Kokomo, IU Kokomo, that's what it was out of. And so we were, we were able to take classes and the tuition assistance program would pay for it. You know, so we had a good deal. Mm -hmm. I, did a, I did all right, I took so many courses, but I never did finish. And I think it's just too late in the day. <laughs> it was just something I wanted mm -hmm. to do, but I never did. It was too much for me to try to pursue that. So it was good to have that knowledge, you know, to know what sexual harassment was, especially women too. Now it could be a female employee could use sexual harassment on a male, you know. Same way with a, uh, a male supervisor could sexual harass females, you know, and create a hostile environment. But I'm saying that if you're going to work in the factory, you may as well know what's going on and know, mm -hmm. and you could say, well, hey, according to the contract and according to the laws of the state of Indiana and the federal laws, this is wrong. You can't do that. Your company can be up for a, a class action suit. And if you don't take care of this, not only will that employee be sued, but the whole company, and they'll, they'll get on that right away. They don't want anything like that to happen. Yeah. That's why a lot of times when, when it happens, they will get on that right away, either fire that person or move them to another uh, department. They don't want that. I used to be on a committee for a diversity and sexual harassment. And, you know, so we got we saw videos and all this. But my experience, I had it real nice Good. in factory. I, I can say that uh, General Motors was good to me. God was good to me, and he used General Motors, you know. In other words, I wasn't looked to GM, but I looked to God, who allowed me to get there, because had it not been for him, I could have got hurt. You know, there were people who got killed. Mm -hmm. And one Saturday, we were working in the mold shop in Anderson, and somebody told me a man had gotten crushed from a, by a robot. And what it was, it was a caged-in area, and he had been warned before. And what... While that robot's working, he would get in there and be doing things. Mm -hmm. And that robot, you know, it's going to do what it crushed him and killed him. A gentleman from Elwood, Indiana. It was sad. But, uh, and then I heard in Anderson, two men had gone out for lunch. And when they came back, one of them got in the press. And I guess the other man forgot and turned it on and it just smashed, crushed him pushed his body out on the, the line, you know. And so what they have is they call lockout. Anytime you're working on machinery, you take your lock and put it on the uh, the switch so that machine can't be turned on. Nobody mm -hmm. can unlock it but the person with the key. Yeah. And that's what's called lockout safety. We have classes and everything. But sometimes people forget. Uh, some of the men, they've gotten their fingers cut off, uh, Different things happen, but I was fortunate. I didn't have any. I got some steel in my eye once, but they got it out. You know. Other than that, it's just I've heard of people getting arms caught up in machinery and all oh, different kind of things. So it's it's dangerous work in certain departments. But ours was like we ran machinery. You had to know how to uh, 
put the grinding wheel on, dress your wheel, and set up your work. If you're going to do an angle on a piece, they would give us blueprints, and we had to get the steel, drill and tap it, machine it while it was soft. Mm -hmm. And then it would be sent out to heat treat, and then we had to grind it down to uh, certain dimensions. So it was nice work, but a person had to know what, how to do it. Just anybody couldn't just start working because they might get hurt. Mm -hmm. Somebody might get their hand in the machine in a mill or a drill or a, a, a grinder. So that was my experience. Um, what, <laughs> um, what are you going to do after your ordainment expires? Uh, my, in ministry? Mm -hmm. Well, you mean pastorate or the ordained just... Well, I saw that your oh, that... ordained certificate expires this oh, year. Oh, I just renew it. We oh. get them every year. Oh. Yeah, that's just my most recent one. Oh. We, we get them every year. Once you're ordained, it stays with you for life. But the uh, one of the bishops, I guess, they decided they wanted us to get it every year. Mm -hmm. Because if you would have a problem with a minister... Uh, if he messed up or something, he couldn't get his license. Mm -hmm. Say say it lasted for five years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you have a minister who is ordained, but yet morally or some kind of way his uh, his life doesn't line up with the church or the word of God, mm -hmm. then he wouldn't get his license again. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's what that's for. That we have to renew them every year. Mm -hmm. but, but once you're ordained, it stays with you oh. all the time. But that's just a, during, see, August is when we have our national conventions, and we go back and we get, get our, we pay the money, <laughs> the secretary will send us our license. That's what that's about. Wow. Um, how many of your kids joined the military? Uh, just, well, three. Tony joined the Army, mm -hmm. and uh, David was in the Navy. Brian, he was in the army. But I'll tell you something about Tony. <laughs> it was a little funny. When Tony decided to go, he was going to have to go to San Francisco. Uh -huh. And he did his basic, at, I think it was Fort, Fort Jackson in the Carolinas. Oh, yeah. And he got sad. I guess he'd never left home. And it was, <laughs> it was like he was crying. He didn't want to leave. <laughs> We tried to reassure him everything's going to happen, <laughs> but now we can laugh about it. Yeah. But I mean, it was serious. Tony didn't, and he's a, you see that picture up there, up by itself, that head, that's Tony. Oh. <laughs> and Tony was like, he was sad, you know. Mm -hmm. But see, he's made it all right. He's got out of the military. Yeah. He went to the Army, and David did his basic down in uh, Orlando, Navy World. Mm-hmm. And he was stationed in, uh, let me think now, Norfolk, Virginia, Norfolk. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Bryant, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. where he did his basic. And he went to, uh, let's see, Germany. That's the one he's over there now. So three of them went and the others didn't. I didn't go myself, though. Yeah. But I heard it's it's good discipline. It's good to go. Why did they Why did they join the military? I think because jobs were a little hard to find. Yeah. And rather than get drafted, just go and get it over with. Oh. And that's why a lot of I hear a lot of the college students that graduate from Ball State mm -hmm. and they leave Muncie because they can't find jobs. Yeah. So I had an experience. Uh, my English teacher. Well, I was going to Muncie Bible College. I mean, uh, yeah, Muncie Bible College for a while. And this is probably back in 1962 or three. I took accounting, and probably two or three classes. And the president said, I said, well, I'll get a job when I finish. He said, no. See, things weren't open for blacks at that time. Yeah. So I got discouraged and I, I quit because, mm -hmm. but had I finished, I imagine things would open up. Yeah. But I didn't have the vision. See, Muncie used to be, when I was in high school, 
the blacks or Afro Americans, we couldn't go in the restaurant and sit down and eat. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, like it is now. We could go to the dime store, Kresge's, or um, Woolworths, mm -hmm. and we could stand at the counter and eat, or we'd eat in the cafeteria. But we couldn't go and, uh, like now, sit down and say, no, no. We'd just have to, <laughs> we'd go by and go into school, we'd see others in the, but we couldn't do it. It was it was somewhat it was segregated. Mm -hmm. Even though we came from the South, there were problems in, in Muncie that existed in the South, but in a subtle way. Oh. And it, it's it's like in the South they say people if they like you they like you if they didn't they let you know. But Muncie it was like a cunning, uh, you know you just didn't know. I tell you experience I had when I was at Warner Gear, and I needed a ride. Uh, Jerry Maynard he was a minister. Mm -hmm. He pastored uh, Maynard's Temple, Church of God in Christ, uh -huh. right on Blaine Street. Now the church is Faith Center, pastored by Larry Carthur. Mm -hmm. And I've known Larry Carthur for years. We were like elementary, uh, you know. But I waited out on 32 for him to pick me up. They called me all kind of names. Some of the people drove by. I hadn't messed with any of them. But mm -hmm. that's, that was the, the heart of some of the men. Mm -hmm. But in the factory, they'd probably smile, or uh, maybe they wouldn't. I didn't know who it was. Look, it, it was dark. Mm -hmm. But when Ella Maynard was to pick me up, just a few of them, you know, a bunch in the cars, everybody didn't do it. So that, that's, I mean, th this were things we had to put up with. And he couldn't report on anybody. I didn't know who it was. Yeah. And they just, they drove by and called, maybe called me names, and then they're gone. Mm -hmm. But now, Pastor Maynard, he's pastoring a church, I think it's Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Nashville or Louisville, and big church. He's, he's got his doctor's degree also. But I think that's basically why they left Muncie, a lot of them, because they couldn't get a job. Mm -hmm. And they, they either went back to, uh, like back to Germany, uh, wherever. Now, Tony was working at a hospital. Brian, he's working in a factory, a tar factory mm -hmm. in, in Germany. But it's, i tell you another thing. When I was raised up in Muncie, most of the blacks lived either in Whiteley, that's the northeast part of Muncie, or across town, that's industry area. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how it was. And you know, we, we got along all right though. Just, uh, but we were active. There was a boys club, there was a branch YMCA, we would play ping pong, pool, uh, baseball, football, and a lot of us played on teams, like I played football for the Bearcats. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and so we were occupied, and by the time we practiced and went home and got our homework, it's time to go to bed. Yeah. So it's consequently, we didn't get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. We were occupied, and and I think there was more respect for parents, you know, and authority back then too. Mm -hmm. I remember once in the eighth grade, somebody did something at Wilson, and the teacher he paddled all of us, you know, he got all of us. And I tell my wife sometimes there was Arnold back in elementary, probably the fifth or sixth grade. The teacher made everybody stay in. And you know what Arnold said? He said, I want to go home. And the teacher let him go home. But she didn't let anybody else go. <laughs> so Arnold, he was, uh, he was nice. I've known Arnold for years. He, he had red hair and some freckles. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I'd say months, it's, it's been all right for me. And I think it's what we make out of wherever we are. Mm -hmm. uh, any more questions, Kevin? What? Uh, actually, I just wanted to find myself. I'm actually going to head up to the Bearcat oh. game. Bearcat? So, uh, they're, play. they're playing um, you know. Kokomo. All right, Kokomo Wildcats. Oh, they're going to Kokomo? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, I think I should. Kokomo, they, that, that'll be a rival, both of them in the North Central Conference. Yeah, yeah. But thank you very much. There's All right, Dan. Don't let me interrupt you. Yes, so glad you came. <laughs> And you have it's a good, good listen. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Well, I hope I'm doing some good here. <laughs> no, you are. Let me. 
Now you were going to ask a question. Oh, oh don't let me in on something. Well, you can get it? Yeah. Right. We're not videotaping. He can I talk and walk. <laughs> yeah. I probably need to stretch. If you'd like something to drink, I can. My wife thank can you. get you. Oh, no, know, thank if, you. If you want something to drink, we got pop, RC, and some. Have a great All right, weekend. you have a good one now and enjoy the game. Okay. In, oh, I think I do need your help. See, there I go thinking I can handle this off of myself. Oh, you can <laughs> handle it. No problem. Bye, Daniel. Thank you. Bye. Be careful on that ice now. We'll see you. Thank you. What are your kids in Muncie doing? Uh, David uh, works for the county. He uh, <coughs> takes care of the, you know, the highway mm. and the county roads, mm -hmm. like the snow. He did have two jobs. He had a he clean up offices. Uh, he and this uh, lady they they clean up offices and the roads. Now it's just the roads. He's had uh, jobs in the hospital, I think the IU Med Center. He used to live in Indianapolis, but that's what he's doing now. Mark works at Warner Gear. I think he's got about 20 years or 18. He's hoping he had more time. <laughs> now here's the thing about Mark. He wishes some of the older ones would sort of retire and get on out. <laughs> But that's their business. I told them. some people that's their life. Yeah. If they if they retire, they don't have they they, they don't have hobbies, uh -huh. and they'll just waste away. Um, Mark is at Warner Gear, and uh, Lynetta, the baby girl, she works for the health department. She graduated from Ball State in health science, and she works for the health department. Delaware County Health Department. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brian, I mean Michael, the baby, he works for a factory uh, department. They put seat covers for cars. Mm -hmm. And Darnette is laid off. She's a middle girl. And that's about it. I think that's. See, let me make sure I got them together. And the other three are out of the city. Mm -hmm. But uh, the one, I'm hoping she'll get a job. But, you know, because she's got a couple of children. Mm -hmm. She's got a little boy and girl. So, so, you know, I know the Lord will bless her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what did your parents do? My parents, well, my dad, uh, when they were in Muncie or before they came? I guess both. Well, they were sharecroppers when they were in Mississippi. Right. They picked cotton. Uh, when they came to Muncie, my mom did day work. She worked for, I'd say, some people who were well-to-do, mm -hmm. uh, clean their house. Domestic. Type. Domestic, right. She did domestic work. And my dad worked, uh, he worked, I think, <laughs> for Frank's Foundry and another place. I can't remember the name of it. but. What I remember, he the most time he was at Beatrice Foods Company, and that they made ice cream, uh, dairy products. That was down on Seymour. You know where the uh, Radisons is? Oh yeah. Well, if you go south of the Radisons, mm -hmm. and where their parking lot is, it was uh, Seymour Street, and they tore those buildings down. That's where he worked. Oh. And he would wash. We helped him wash the cars. I mean the trucks, mm -hmm. ice cream trucks, and he worked in there where they made the ice cream. Now, one good thing about it, he would bring ice cream home. <laughs> but that's what my dad did. He retired, and he passed away in ninety. I mean eighteen. I mean <laughs> nineteen eighty-five, eighty-four, five. Yeah. But my mom's still living. Yeah, she's still living, and uh, she's doing doing real good. I. I was with her, um, was it Saturday? Took her out to dinner. Mm -hmm. and so it was just good to be with mom. Now, I, I got a sister here in Muncie, and they look after her, so that, that oh. means a lot. I got a sister in Dayton, I didn't tell you about this, but I stayed at their house for a while. You know, while we were working overtime, mm -hmm. and I'd go upstairs and they had a room for, I think it must have been her granddaughter's room because there was a doll in there or something. And let me tell you about my brother-in-law. Now, my brother-in-law got into this uh, Eastern religion, I'd say similar to Hindu, mm -hmm. and 
and he would chant and all that stuff. But that was all right, you know, because it's a free country and we choose what we want. But when I'd come home <laughs> from work, <laughs> he would put in the videos, VCR, and this man with a beard and he's talking all this stuff. And I didn't understand what it was about. And I would usually go to sleep. <laughs> and, and, one, and there was one brother, I'll tell you, uh, Gary Lockard, he was a Methodist, United Methodist. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I and another minister and I were able to go to uh, Springfield, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Now he lived, his church was in Tip City. He lived yeah. in the Vandalia area. Mm -hmm. And so we met at his church and got on, uh, I think it was a bus or we got in the cars and we went to a prayer. Uh, it was like a seminar workshop on prayer. Dr. Tepo, Tico. And, uh, and I thought that was nice, Gary Lockard. And uh, he's Caucasian. I'm, I'm going to let you see the love that uh, the brethren accepted us. And so we went from Tip City up to uh, Springfield, big church. And they had balcony at one of those real nice old United Methodist church. Mm -hmm. And he came and ministered to our church on prayer. And he's into that email and all that. I wish I was better on that stuff. I could keep in contact with him. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I was doing. There's a bishop in Georgia, Bishop Pugh, and I was writing him letters and, and getting his newslet newsletter. And I tried to click on to his address. Mm -hmm. And I kept, and I must have erased it. Mm -hmm. And my daughter's going to have to help me out to get back in business. And you know, I haven't messed too much with the computer since then. But my daughter's real good on it. But now, he's a white minister also, Bishop Pugh. And so, we, you know, when you when you look at the body of Christ, we, we get along. Color is not an issue. It's the heart and the spirit of God. By that same spirit, we're all baptized into one body, and we become one as far as the body of Christ. Uh, and so, we just... We have a good time. So any questions, you just feel free. Um, uh, anything about Muncie? Oh, I have a question. Um, for black businesses in Muncie, what do you think is the best uh, surviving businesses, businesses that do well? Uh, businesses? Uh, Well, the businesses that are doing good, I say, are the banks. <laughs> um, big business, you know, the, the banks that are loaning money for houses, um, cars, big corporations. Well, let me see. I better sort of think about that one. But hospitals and banks are doing pretty good. Um, there are a lot of your service agencies are doing pretty good because there are a lot of people needing help but these are usually funded by federal government and state they're doing good because the economies of such people are needing help and uh, they run into areas where they need help but in Muncie I don't I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of industry has left Indiana uh, with the economy being a little down right now. Um, Can you think of any uh, black businesses that do really well? Like... Well, I know uh, Kaiser, the carpet, he, in, he's, he does carpet, he's doing pretty good. Yeah. Kaiser's carpet. Uh, the barbers, they're keeping busy, beauticians and barbers, uh -huh. because people are going to, they're concerned about their appearance. Uh, let's see. And I know a barber, actually, shoemaker, he just recently retired, and he worked for years. Uh, 
There's another one, Kerry, he's going to retire. So I'd say the barber, the hair industry, and the churches uh, are doing real good. I don't, I won't say how good, but they're, they're, they're coming on all right. Uh -huh. uh, usually in your bigger cities where there's, they may have thousand, so many thousand members, they're doing real good. But around here, most of your churches aren't that large. Right. But we're we're doing all right though. Uh, I'm trying to think of some more. There is a restaurant, Uncle Mont's. I think he's doing good. Yeah, somebody told us that he is actually moving downtown. Yes. Uh, you, do you know? Are you familiar with Walnut Street? Mm -hmm. All right. If you're coming. Uh, from the south end of Muncie, you cross mm -hmm. the railroad tracks, mm -hmm. and Walnut bears to the right, and then it turns to the left, and there's the Y, M C A New Y. Mm -hmm. Well, right before you get there, there's a building. It used to be the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. Now I heard that's the building he's going to get. Yeah. But he's he's doing good because we go, and he's usually got a lot of people, uh, you know, that he's serving. But I can't think of too many, I, I can't think of a lot of uh, black owned businesses really in Muncie. Now there's a Muncie Times, Sister Foster, they, they've been going for years, but uh, I don't really know as far as the profit mm -hmm. end of it, whether she's making a good profit or just breaking even, or, but she is still going. That, that, that paper. Uh, see, when I was younger, Muncie had let's see, a couple of black doctors. There was Dr. Smith, Dr. Braden, and Dr. Davis. And a dentist by the name of Dr. Brooks and Dr. Thomas. And now, uh, there, there's a lady, Dr black lady doctor and there was a doctor Saunders who mm -hmm. left and he went to Fort Wayne and he was into like research uh, and I heard him during the uh, Dr. King's day oh yeah uh, he used to be here in Muncie on staff out the hospital but I don't see too many out there there I'm sure there are but you know when you don't if you're not going out there a lot, you just mm -hmm. don't keep up. Uh, but of course, these aren't businessmen, they're on staff. But you know, you used to have the uh, family doctor. That's how Dr. Smith was. And we would go and get our shots. And if something happened, you know, we'd go, we had our family doctor to go to. But uh, Dr. Smith, he moved to California, eventually he passed away. And uh, Dr. Braden passed, Dr. Davis. And you just didn't have it like you had years ago. Um, I would say the people who are, in some sense, in some sense, doing well, they usually end up moving away. You think so? Yes. Just uh, not enough. Uh, they want to keep going, not enough to keep them here. Right, or the opportunities a little bit better in another area. And I'll tell you another thing, in the school system, there you just don't have the blacks in administration that you used to have. Like uh, used to, Muncie Community Schools had a black, uh, uh, Dr. Sam Abram was over the whole system. Right. And he went to uh, Pontiac, Michigan, and he was over their system. And then he, he moved back to Muncie and he's over a special, I think, uh, the whole county. I mm -hmm. uh, can't think of the name of it, but he's over that now. I think it's for students that are having little problems and mm -hmm. try to give them a little boost. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think now there's a Gorns, Mike Gorns at Southside, assistant principal, and he's to retire, and I don't think they're going to have any blacks in administration in months. Really? That's the way it looks. So that's, to me, it's critical. Uh, what has happened a lot, 
some have moved away or retired and they haven't been replaced. Mary Dollison, you probably heard of her. She was a school teacher and she retired. She started Moms, Motivate Our oh, Minds. Yeah. That's she and a, another lady, Motivate Our Minds. In fact, she married a cousin of mine, Cornelius Dollison. See, Cornelius' dad and his mom, his mom was a sister to my dad, my Aunt Ruth. But of course, she lost the Abram name when she married the Dollison man. Uh, but, I mean, they're leaving. There was a doctor, uh, uh, Jackson, Homer Jackson, and Cassandra Jackson. I think she left. She was a principal. She left to get her doctor's degree. And they were in Muncie. They left. So it's like people are leaving Muncie. Yeah. I tell you, one business that's doing good, the morticians. Faulkner's, Carmichael's, and Goler and Goler. Now, I don't think Faulkner has the volume that Goler and Carmichael, but Carmichael's doing good. He's, in fact, what happened, Carmichael used to be with Goler. It was Carmichael and Goler. And their business established was right at uh, Hackley and Kirby. Well, Carmichael left and went to Fort Wayne. And when, last time I talked to him, or one of, well, not one of the most recent times I talked with him, he said that he's building a place in Muncie. He's going to establish, uh, and he's going to have Fort Wayne and Muncie. Oh, wow. But he's doing, he does good work. Yeah. Now, Goler has a building in Anderson. Used to be uh, Brooks. Brooks died and wasn't anybody there to carry on. And so if you go in Anderson on 14th or 32, going west, right on the corner, you'll see uh, Goler. So they have, they have a branch in Anderson and Muncie. Whereas... Faulkner has just got his, uh, his dad used to be a mortician. Mm -hmm. He got killed and his son took it over. And I think he's still, he works part-time. He's in a factory as well as doing mortician. Mm -hmm. He's the uh, funeral director. His mother was a school teacher. She would direct the, uh, uh, the choir, mm -hmm. you know, when they'd have the community sing uh, Christmas. And she would, Doris Faulkner, she, she was into that. So I would say, I forgot, but the morticians are, some, I think they're doing pretty good because so many people are dying. Yeah. And that's something you hate to, you know, you hate to, you want to see people live. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, Sacrifice. Yes, ultimately people are going to die. And I'll give you an example. Uh, one while in Muncie, it looked like there was... A black dying every week or more, maybe two a week. And we had a, oh, one of the, well, she, she goes to our church, young lady lost a baby, and we had a graveside service for her. Uh, let me see, what day was this? I think it was Monday, Monday or Tuesday. Out to Garden Memories. Mm. It was a sad, you know, it was pretty sad. She just turned her back. She hated to see the little casket, you know, yeah. put down there. And she just, she, she cried. Uh, but these things happened. I tell you, and it was a private, you know. Meeks were in charge, but, uh, and so basically all I could do is just pray and have a committal service, just commit her back to the earth. And I, I had, I, I told her mother, or maybe it was her, I said, I did one, my wife, my sister-in-law, she lost a baby in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So I did one there. I did one for a pastor here in the city. His wife lost a baby out to garden member. They call it baby land. Mm -hmm. And I did, my oldest son, when he married his his wife had already been married before, and she had some uh, daughters, you know, a couple of older daughters. One of them had a baby, and she lost the baby. The baby had a lot of complications, and they wanted me to do it. And so I, we went all the way to Kentucky, down to Ratcliffe, Fort Knox, and did the service. 
So I had, I've had about three of them, three or four. Uh, and you, you hate to, for the family, but yet that child is going to heaven. Mm -hmm. The Lord has a place for the, the babies. And there's a lot of things that they don't have to encounter. And here's what they said about the baby in Kentucky. Christine wanted to see him again, and he had a little smile on his face. And so evidently he didn't have it at first because they, they, they noticed there was a little smile on his, on his face. Just a little white casket. But I'm just saying that's a business that, I mean, for right now at least, they won't have to worry because people are dying. But there will be a time when death will be no more. People will live on, you know. So that's, this is our hope, this is our joy that whether we die or go in the rapture, we're going to be with the Lord. And death hath no more dominion over us. We'll have a glorified body like the Lord. We'll be like angels, you know, that's reassuring. Mm -hmm. And so many people don't see it that way. They want to live for right now, you know. Uh, let's, Let's party, let's, uh, whatever. <laughs> and the, the bad part is living contrary to God's laws and principles and guidelines because they have to face God in judgment. Mm -hmm. And so, and we judge ourselves when we see his word and, and if we're not coming up to that word, we say, well, Lord, you help us. And we strive to live according to his precepts. And when we're saved, we're a Christian. And we have eternal life. And so we have a we have hope of going to a better place. But that's just uh, you know, the hope of a Christian. <laughs> no. Does your wife like cats? See, there's a lot of cats sitting oh, around. Oh, yes. I guess she does. I I don't like them too well myself, cats. And here's what she been. She wants a dog. I told her, we're on the go, so we don't have a chance of time for a dog. You know, we'd have to put him in a... Cage. Yeah, or a veterinarian, you know, if we leave. Kennel. Kennel. Um, or we'd have to... Some I'd have to see about him. We had dogs when the children were young, you know. Mm -hmm. They might get sick and die or get hit by a car. And so, consequently, we don't have a dog. A lot of the neighbors... Hi. Uh, Hello. Mother, you like cats, don't you? Kind. No, not real good. But, but you got all these <laughs> these cats around here, though. <laughs> Would you like something to drink? I oh, want could fix you some pop or water or something. Oh, no, thank okay, you. Thank you, though. But uh, that's, you know, I don't know. It's like, I've seen a lot of change in Muncie. See, I'm 60 years old. And so I've lived here about what, 54 years. Uh, no, 56, 56 years. So I'm, uh, I've seen some changes. And... Uh, and I'd say Muncie's all right. If you're going to raise a family, mm -hmm. there's crime and drugs, but it's not as big of a magnitude that you'd find in larger cities. But uh, some people say, well, I want, to, I, I want to get out of Muncie. There's nothing in Muncie. <laughs> but it's what you make out of Muncie. Is that right, Mother? That's what the kids say. <laughs> now, that, Mark, right? Yeah. Mark says that. That's the one works at one a year. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't have any trouble in Muncie. But I will say this. I was able to leave Muncie when it came to work because I worked in Anderson all those years. I worked in uh, Dayton. I worked in uh, Yorktown, which is almost like Muncie, mm -hmm. for a little while. So I don't mind if it takes moving around. You know, you just have to, you know, so be it. Uh, I have like a, 
when I got saved, we began to travel. You know, we would go to church meetings, uh, mm -hmm. conventions, and councils. Uh, and so we've been going ever since. And still go. Like, I'd like to go to Columbus more often. Mm -hmm. Dr. Acock says he's got some material for me. And, you know, I could teach some lessons. And I haven't got there yet. So I need to get out of Columbus. Uh, oh, there was something I left out. When I was in Middletown, Ohio, mm -hmm. See, after a year and a half, I got an apartment because of, uh, I, I, didn't ha I wouldn't have to drive every day. And I would go to a Middletown, no, Town Boulevard, Church of God. And a brother Jerry and Sophie, he would teach, good teacher. And so on Monday evening, they had their classes. Mm -hmm. and the reason I went is because brother Kenny, he's the type of brother that, really loves the Lord. And if you needed prayer, he, he'd pray for you right there. He wasn't ashamed, you know? And so, I wanted to know who his teacher was. Well, it was uh, Jerry Howard, and I would go to their Bible study on uh, Monday nights. I'd be a little tired because I had to, it was like from the weekend, that Monday, I came from Indiana. Mm -hmm. And physically, I, my body would just be a little tired, you know, because I think the class was seven to nine, something like that. But it was worth it. And when I retired, they came to my retirement. I, I don't know, I got some retirement pictures, but I don't know if they're here. Dr. Acock couldn't come because he was like a, here's a, there's Jerry Locker, okay. Gary Locker. My uh -huh. brother, that, uh, I was telling you about. You heard of Hughley's on TV? Oh yeah. yeah. This is a cousin. His name is <laughs> Alan Hughley. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And he lives in uh, Vandalia. Oh. He's, huh. He could, he fixed dinner for me, and I went to his. Uh, see, that's Alan Hughley, uh -huh. and that's a cousin to the one I told you. Now, there's Gary Locker, the one that uh, we went with his church. Uh, he was active in Promise Keepers also. Uh huh. That's when I retired. What I did is I retired uh, in January, but most of the men were gonna wait till March because that's when uh, I could have waited up to March, but I'd had enough. And that's where they would have cake oh. and uh, you know, like your family come in mm -hmm. and everybody mill around. Well, I did sort of mine uh, on my own uh -huh. because I was ready to go. I wasn't mm -hmm. gonna wait for all that. See, my situation was different. There's a picture of my mother right here and my wife. Let's see, this is, that's my three daughters right there. And a granddaughter, that's Darnetta, Lisa, Lynetta. And there's some at our church there. Uh -huh. That's Mark, that's my son there. Sister-in-law and brother-in-law. Old Daniels and his wife. Let me see, who is this? Tories? Yeah, that's Carol's son. But you're welcome to look these over. Now that's when I worked in Middletown, Ohio. I took some pictures of mm -hmm. Middletown. So, Brother Jerry, and they came all the way to my, uh, you know, retirement. I thought that was, that was nice. Very nice. Here's uh, Bishop Pugh. He's the minister from, uh, from Georgia. He travels to Africa to, uh, let's see. When he was a child, his great-grandmother prophesied and said, the Lord is going to send you to the colored people. Well, and his son was a teenager, and he was telling, and he, he, he said, what do you mean the colored people? He said, we're all colored. <laughs> and, and Bishop P said, I, I knew what he was talking about. See, he was born in Mississippi, and that was unheard of. He's younger than I am, but he goes to Africa, and he's, he, he, he's trying to get money from churches to support where they can get wells and get clean water. Mm -hmm. He goes to London, and he teaches 
how to minister in the gifts of the Spirit. And, I mean, uh, blind eyes open, cancers. Uh, he told of a man in a wheelchair. And he said he was praying and it looked like the anointing was on, a special anointing. And there was this man, and in, in the services, he, he went out and prayed for him, and he came out of that wheelchair. The Lord healed him. And that's the type of ministry he's in. Wow. Now, he's the one I was communicating on the email. Mm -hmm. And I've got messed up. But I'm going to have to get back. And he's at Brother Bowen. That's a pastor, uh, Rick Bowen. His church is near Wilson. Uh, used to, it's Vic, Victory Tabernacle. It used to be Get Sin in the Apostolic right at uh, 12 or Memorial and Walnut. Then they sold the building. A bunch of Christian centers in there now. And they went out and built a new church. Oh, wow. And isn't that... Isn't That's that Bishop that? Milton. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. He's the pastor's Christ Temple. Yes. He doesn't have his beard and uh, all that. But yeah. that, that's Pastor Milton. Right. But I'm just saying, oh, right here I found him. Uh, that's when I retired. I'm going to try to find him. Yes. There's uh, Jer Jerry Howard and Sophie. Okay. Now, they're from Middletown. And they came all the way to Muncie for my retirement. Okay. And uh, Brother Kenny, it was about six of them. Yeah, there's Brother Kenny. Uh -huh. He's the one that, he's real loud and on fire for God. Him and his wife, and there was another bro brother. Uh -huh. I'll tell you, and my daughter, what they did, they surprised me. But I knew something was going on. Yeah. And this was out to the... Uh, Career Center uh, on Elgin Street. And here's uh, my, my sister. That's my oldest sister, Iris, lives in Dayton. Uh -huh. And there's Sam, Dr. Abram, and Millie, my mom, and Lilla. That's my uh, youngest sister, okay. Lilla. And where does she, she live here? Yeah, she lives, uh, she lives out there on Brady, and she... Married uh, P.D. Stewart. Now he works at the uh, New Venture Gear. Uh -huh. But <clears throat> but I like to take pictures. Yeah, I do too. It's fun. It's it gets a little expensive though. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's something I like to do. And also, a couple came from Gary, Indiana, District Elder Samuel Smith and Evangelist Dorothy Smith, and uh, the group that came from Columbus, Ohio, minister friends of mine. It was a lot of people there. George and Joanne Wright, Dr. Day, and uh, Dr. Youngblood. This is a he was one of the teachers at Crossroads Bible College. Norm Youngblood. Mm -hmm. Where's Crossroads? Farmland, Indiana. Okay, farmland. Mm -hmm. If you go to east of Muncie, you'll come to Selma, then Parker City, then Farmland, where Highway 1 junctions with 32. That's, that's Farmland. A little, okay. It's a small place. There's George and Joanne Wright. Mm -hmm. and that's Dr. Jim Day and uh, uh, Susie. That's my brother-in-law, John Fisher, my wife's brother. There's Cornelius and Mary Dollison. See, this is my cousin. Mm -hmm. Cornelius, and there's my uncle, Uncle Buddy. Uh -huh. And that's Mary Dollison. That's my Uncle Jesse. My Aunt Lily passed away. But you could look at that. Close these curtains. But, you know, it's like uh, the Lord's been good to me. Yeah. I got a brother that passed away, uh, Jay, the oldest, Jay and my dad are the only ones, uh, my sisters are living and the rest of my brothers, I, there, there were seven of us, seven of you. Iris, Jay, myself, I'm the third one, Lily, Willie, Joe, and Steve, seven. <laughs> <laughs> What's the 
Ball State? Ball State, that was a 25th anniversary for a New Hope Baptist Church. Okay. And this is a pastor, Pastor Jake, uh, W.C. Edwards, and his daughter spoke. Okay. Uh, she was a main speaker. She did a good job, too. She's a minister, and I see what's her name? Uh, uh, Tracy. No? Tracy. Lois. What's Pastor Edwards' daughter? Uh, her name is Stacy. And I think her counselor told her she wasn't college material. Really? And she went and got her uh, selected service like a postman or something mm -hmm. like that. Well, I, I, I didn't get into that trade. But, but you know, uh, in the field I was in, it's, it's, it was good money. It, a lot of the, it was, uh, with the benefits we got, I mean, it was, it was a real good deal. And one of those papers, they called it like that other uh, college degree. What it was referring to as apprentice program. I'll, I'll show you. It's on this paper here somewhere. What's this? Oh, that's a chart. I made that. Uh, it gives a creative week in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And this is Daniel. In the second chapter of Daniel, you know, he saw this great image. Mm -hmm. The king dreamed and the king forgot it. He had a head of gold and his uh, breast and arms were silver. His belly and thighs were brass and his legs were iron and feet part clay and part iron, down his toes rather. And Daniel watched the image till the rock was hewed out the mountain without hands. That represent Christ tearing down the kingdom of this world. Mm -hmm. Now, the head of gold represented Babylon, uh, the, the lion, mm -hmm. and the arms were the Medo-Persian Empire, and the Greeks, Alexander the Great, and the Greeks were the, the belly of mm -hmm. brass, and the legs were Rome, Western Division, and the ten toes represent the uh, revival of the ancient Roman Empire. And when the Antichrist will come, these ten kings are going to elect him, and he's going to be over the ancient revival of the ancient Roman Empire. But he'll be an imposter, and he will do miracles, and a lot of people believe him, but it'll, it'll be a bad time, really. But the church will be raptured out of here before that happens. And that's something that I did years ago. But the colors are so faint. Mm -hmm. you know? Now here's what. Uh, see this says the other four year degree. Uh -huh. That's the apprentice program. Well that's sort of what we were into. Mm -hmm. You could either get it in four years or eight years. Um, the apprentice took four years. And some took eight years because... They call it like EIT, Employee in Training. Mm -hmm. After four years, he would get an S. That means seniority. And the other four would take to get journeyman. Oh. But once you get your card, you, you got it either way. So I went in through the EIT program. But this is what this is, the other degree. Uh -huh. And I mean, a person can end up you know, doing real good if they get a good company like General Motors. General Motors or Ford. But... So you went through that for eight years to get your journeyman card? Mm -hmm. I took eight years EIT, but it's still, I got it. Mm -hmm. And I think I made more money than the apprentice because when I got in my training, we balanced ours with journeymen. Mm -hmm. In other words, I was able to work overtime, whereas apprentice could They didn't work overtime until they got their four years. Oh, really? So I ended up making more money. That's good. And so we had classes together. I mean, we, we were... Apprentices and, and the EITs, we were in the same classes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I had to go to Anderson. Did you see a little certificate, Anderson Area Vocational and Technical? Mm -hmm. that, well, that's where I got my training over in Anderson. Now, Muncie has a career center on Elgin where they had my retirement. And then they have something similar over there. <clears throat> but it's, uh, you know, I thank God for Muncie. You know, it's, uh, 
I know where most places are. You know. And so I don't have any problem at all. Um, how often or how many hours a week about these your ministry so, like duties take you away? Of uh, right now, you mean? Well, make the most time as far as ministry is preparing for sermons. Uh, and I would say probably maybe uh, four to eight hours. It doesn't take me that long uh -huh. because basically what I, I usually like to pray and the Lord will give me a lay a scripture on my heart and I will outline it and get my scriptures together and then I'll, I'll just get up and sometimes there are others that are similar or related to that that he'll give me as I'm ministering. Mm -hmm. you know? But it's exciting. It's just something that I enjoy. It's great. Like Sunday, I'm to preach at Superintendent Lawson's at 4 o'clock. This is Terrestrial Temple, Church of God in Christ. So I asked our assistant, I asked him would he preach Sunday so that way I wouldn't have to preach twice. Elder Daniel, he's, he's the assistant pastor. And it's just, you know, we have fellowship. The minister's been with us. And I tell you, Sunday, we went to a little outside of Kokomo. Brother Delbert has a church. He used to be our assistant pastor. In fact, our church started in his basement. Yeah. And he, what he did is uh, he went to GMI up in Flint, Michigan. I said it was Flint. General Motors Institute. He became an engineer. And he went to Ball State and got his uh, master's in business. And he was uh, like a supervisor at New Venture Gear of Chevrolet. Well, what happened? He transferred to Kokomo as a superintendent. And later he became a plant manager in uh, Mexico. So he moved to McAllen, Texas. Now he's back. And he would fly over... Uh, in uh, London and he'd, he'd go different places because of his knowledge and everything. Well, he sent a letter and they got a church going. Real nice. and he, I mean, he, he's good. He's intelligent and uh, we had a nice time. Nice crowd too. That Sunday night. Well, I'm glad for him because, uh, you know, I can remember how, listen to what he did for us. He would take care of the grass at our church. He was the janitor. He would take care of the books. Plus, he had yards that he did himself. And he had a big family, too. He's got a big family. I think most of them are out, either in school or on their own, but the baby. I think he's 12. I asked him, I said, are you retired? He said, no. He, he had, he's got a son that's 12. He said, um, I guess he's going to be working a while because of his age. He said, that son... I asked him, he said he was born in Texas. See, that's when he was in Texas. So it's a, it's look like always something to do, you know, whether we get together as churches, um, Dr. King's holiday, um, somebody pass away, we, we go to their home going or a meeting. And there's things to do at our church too, you know, we got to, I think we're going to have to dig when the water it rains real bad we get water in our basement now we had a roof put on and so we got other projects to do what street is your church on uh willard willard, right, okay. willard near macedonia yeah. but i'll tell you there's a lot of churches on willard there's a new hope baptist when you come off of madison that first block they're right there. If you come heading uh, south and turn left, well, you go up one block and their church is right there. And then you go down to Hackley, there's the Church of Christ, Midtown Church of Christ. And, th and then you'll go to Faulkner's. Faulkner's is on the same street. Mm -hmm. All right, you go down a little further, there's True Vine at Pastor Sloss. And then you go a little further, there's Sister Levi, Paramount Community Church. See, her mother pastored that church 
but she passed away. Now Charlotte Levi is she's got it. Well, then as you go down, there's Pastor Hill, New Bethel Baptist, and then our church. And if you turn left on Macedonia, you go to what we call Five Points. There's a, a Baptist church with the name of uh, Pilgrim Rest. Pilgrim Rest. And it came out of uh, Mount Zion. See, something happened or somebody pulled out of uh, Mount Zion and they started another church. Mm -hmm. And that's Pilgrim Rest. Are you familiar with Five Points? No, mm -hmm. not very well. Well, Five Points, the reason they call it Five Points is because five streets intersect. Uh, Ohio Avenue, Burlington, Kirby, and Macedonia. They all come together. And there's a church on the uh, west west side. And that's a well, New Hope Baptist. Not New Hope, uh, Pilgrim Rest. But that's not too far from our church. See, Muncie has a nice amount of black churches, really. It really does. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting together more so than we used to. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a more fellowship. We used to pretty much, the different denominations or different faiths would stay to themselves. But well, now... It's like the Martin Luther King Day. Right. We just, we just come together. Mm -hmm. And there's that uh, collective coalition of concerned clergy also, and that that helps us to work together. And you know, things come in this, up in the city that uh, we feel we can help, or as a force, we all come together, uh -huh. and we're stronger than just one church or one or two, two or three churches. You know, mm -hmm. all of us come together. Can I have you sign this? It's uh, just a yeah. form that says, uh, you might have had it before, that we, uh, take, that we take our conversation and everything. All right, just right here? Yeah, just print your name, sign, date, and then check yes or no. We can keep it in the archives, which we hope you mm -hmm. will, so that it will further research. I print it up here. Yes. Oh, and then sign it for us. Yeah. It always makes me laugh, having people sign that. Yeah. I don't. I think this is the first one I signed them. Have you? Okay, some people might be coming back to you. Because, uh, well, I wouldn't have any problem at all because I want this to be a success. Definitely, me too. I think it will be. I think everybody who's working on it is really dedicated to it. Students and community. Mm -hmm. I do too. Uh, this is the seventh, is it? Yep. Three months till my birthday. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, happy birthday ahead of time. <laughs> Thanks. So that's people's birthdays this weekend. It's Carrie's from our class, Kissel. Wow. My roommates. So. I have, we have less than three months I left know. of college. I, I, know. Take, I know. Check yes or no if, you, if we can keep it in the Ball State Archives. It would be with Hurley's stuff. Because yes. Hurley, you know, he's written about everything. I'll so. take yes. <laughs> That sounds great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And it's nice, too, because if anybody ever wants to oh, come yes. back and learn right. about Muncie or what people have talked about that didn't make it into the book, they can always go to it and listen to the tapes. When I was in high school, I don't, that's one of my daughter's friends. Uh, I love weddings. Let me see. Picture. I got to do one in June, June 21st. There's a yeah. young couple. She's pretty bad. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah, Erica. This is my daughter. Let, let me ask uh, my wife. Uh, her friend, as well as I know her. <laughs> Lois, what's Lynette's She's friend? That, uh, she, she had a baby. I like her bouquet. She has a cool dress. Call. Little, little, little. Hmm. Uh, Cecilia. 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 Yeah, that's Cecilia. Beautiful. Um, let me see. Now, you're Michelle. Yep. What was your name? Ann. Ann, all right. Yes. Yeah, I, what, so you're both from Ohio. Yep, yep. Well, I, I, I can appreciate Ohio because I met so many good people over there, uh -huh. and I made more money. You know. 
I was able to make good money on them. Definitely. That's great. And there were some that worked all that old time. They really made money. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did all right, too. But I'm through with that now. Yep. I was born in Ohio and stayed there until college. Yep. That's good. Me, too. There was a, when I was at Ball State, a gentleman from Ohio, and I forget what city he was from. It's been so long, but he was from Ohio, too. Uh-huh. We had a lot of classes, you know, World Civ, English, Phys Ed, uh, Biology, Health. Um, All those classes. And it just, in one year, see, they, when I was going, they had quarters. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and they really put the work to us. Yeah. So I can empathize with the students <laughs> I know. It's work. Definitely. This, this semester is nice. It's a lot of work, but it's not. And I like working um, on one project, you know, really mm -hmm. dedicating myself mm -hmm. to one project and not having a lot. paper for this class, paper for this right. class, test for this class. You never are able to focus everything on one yeah. thing. You can't so really ever do great. your best on one thing because you have because, yeah, so many things. Right. I can focus all my attention on doing this, and I like that. Mm -hmm. well, you'll make it, both of you, you'll be all right. See, when I was going, I remember Dr. Emmons. Mm -hmm. he, he was living at that time. And they built. What they had is the, is the English building and the music, and they built the Emmons Auditorium right between them. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, I just remember, in fact, Jesse Owens, he spoke um, when I was going to Ball State. Jesse Owens spoke at that time. He was, it was like an auditorium in the uh, old library. You know where that is? It's like a, uh. where the, uh, the ad building is. If you would go right straight uh, across that field, right, going uh, north. Yeah, they have There's they old, have old building. classes in there now. All right, it's called North Quad. North Quad. Mm -hmm. Well, it was an auditorium, and that's where he. It used to be the library, mm -hmm. library, and it had an auditorium, and he spoke in there. He was a real good speaker, and uh, probably other things, but I do remember him. <laughs> Well, I hope this has been helpful to yes, you. It has. Definitely. It has been very helpful. Yes, thank you. We really are seeing a lot pull together yes. for our chapter area. So we're excited. Yours was uh, making a living? Yes, getting a living. Mm -hmm. And if I think of anything I forget, well, 